So here we're going to look at both the sum and the product of a certain sequence of numbers. So we've got the numbers tangent squared m times pi over 2n plus 1, where m is ranging between 1 and n. So by the end of the video, we'll have a closed form for the sum of these numbers and the product of these two numbers. And we're only going to use elementary techniques. So the first fact that we're going to make use of is Euler's formula. So e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then we'll also use this trigonometric fact that tangent squared m pi over 2n, those are all distinct. In other words, they are all non-equal for m going from 1 to n. Okay, so we'll start our calculation by evaluating this Euler's formula at a super famous point, and that is theta equals pi. And so that gives us the formula e to the i pi equals negative 1. Now the next thing we want to do is exponentiate both sides of this to the m power, where m is a positive integer. So that's going to give us e to the i m pi equals minus 1 to the m. Okay, fantastic. Now, after that, I'll take both sides and I'll exponentiate it to the first power, but I'll do it on the left-hand side by 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, and I'll do it on the right-hand side just by 1. So let's see what that does. That's going to turn this left-hand side into e to the i m over 2n plus 1 times pi, and then that is all raised to the 2n plus 1. So notice the 2n plus 1 and the 2n plus 1 cancel, and that just leaves us with this original left-hand side. And then the right-hand side, well, that's just raised to the first power, so that's just minus 1 to the m. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is rewrite the inside of this using Euler's formula where theta is equal to m pi over 2n plus 1. So let's see what that gives us. So that's going to allow us to write cosine of m pi over 2n plus 1 plus i sine m pi over 2n plus 1 all raised to the 2n plus 1 equals minus 1 to the m. Good. Now I want to recall really quickly my binomial expansion theorem. So let's recall that if I take the binomial alpha plus beta to the capital N power, then I can expand that as a sum. The sum k goes from 0 to capital N. Here we're assuming that N is a positive integer, but that's OK because that's what we have in our setup. And then we have um, the binomial coefficient, N choose k. And then we'll have alpha to the k and then beta to the n minus k. Good. Okay, so let's see what that gives us when we use that into this binomial right here. In other words, we have alpha is the cosine term and beta is the i times sine term. So that allows us to write this thing as the sum as k goes from 0 to 2n plus 1, that's our upper limit. Now we have our binomial coefficient, which is going to be 2n plus 1 choose k. And now we have cosine raised to the k power. So I'm going to write that as cosine m pi over 2n plus 1. Now that's all raised to the k power. And now I have i sine raised to the 2n minus k power. So I'm going to put the i out here. So I'll have i to the 2n plus 1 minus k, but I'll take the plus 1 and I'll put an i out here. Okay, great. And then next is I have sine of m pi over 2n plus 1 all to the 2n plus 1 minus k, and then that's still equal to minus 1 to the m. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing that I want to do is extract the real and imaginary part of the left and right hand side of the equation. So the next thing that I want to do is extract the imaginary part of the left and right hand side of the equation. So notice I can extract the imaginary part of the right hand side of the equation. That's quite easy and I just get the number zero because there's only real components over there on the right hand side. But on the left-hand side, there are real and imaginary components. And notice the imaginary components are controlled by this exponent in here. So notice I factored an i out, and I did that so that we could see that the rest of this is real when this part right here is even. 
which means k has to be even as well. So let's just reiterate what's going on there. So if this exponent is even, then i to an even power is plus or minus 1, which gives us an imaginary number because we're multiplying that by i on the outside. Now, if um, this number up here is odd, then that means this is plus or minus i. We distribute the i through and we get a real number. But since we're interested in extracting the imaginary part, we want to look for when this interior is real. So that means that needs to be even. So that means if we're extracting the imaginary part, we're really only summing over k equals even and then getting rid of this i right here. Because when we extract the imaginary part, we don't keep the i, we just take the real number multiplying the imaginary number. Okay, so we're summing over k even, which really sets us up to simplify this if we do a re-indexing of k turns into two times k. So that's gonna change this from a sum k equals zero to two n plus one to a sum k equals zero to n. And you might say, well, what about the n plus 1 here? But if we're only summing over even values, then we don't have the 2n plus 1 at the top. We just have a 2n at the top. Good. And now we have 2n plus 1 choose 2k. And now next, uh, this is going to be equal to i squared to the n minus k. So notice it's i to the 2n minus 2k, but we can just write it like that. And next, we have... Uh, cos m pi over 2n plus 1, that's all to the 2k. And then we have uh, sine m pi over 2n plus 1, that's all to the 2n plus 1 minus 2k. And then that's equal to zero from what we said before about the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring this to the top. Maybe between those steps, I'll replace this i squared with a minus 1 just to get all of the stuff that is seemingly imaginary out of this, and then we've got something to work with. So on the last board, we arrived at the following formula. So we've got this sum as k goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n minus k, two n plus one choose two k. We've got cosine to the two kth power, and then sine to the two k plus one minus two k power, and that's all equal to zero. Now our goal is to investigate these things involving tangents instead of this thing involving sine and cosine. But we can translate this into something involving tangents if we divide out by the cosine. So just to uh, spell this out, we're gonna divide this entire thing, so every term from this equation by cosine evaluated at m pi over two n plus one, all to the two n plus one power. But to make it a little bit more clear, I'm going to split this up into two pieces. I'm going to split this up into cosine, again evaluated at m pi over 2n plus 1 raised to the 2k power. And then cosine, again, m pi over 2n plus 1 raised to the 2n plus 1 minus 2k power. Good. And now this first bit, I'm going to think about coming over here and dividing this cosine. That's obviously just gonna give us one because we're dividing something by itself. And then this bit, I'm gonna come over here and divide the sine and notice those have the same exponent. So that's gonna give us tangent to that exponent. So in the end, this changes the sum to one that only deals with tangent. So we have the sum as k goes from zero to n, minus one to the n minus k, two n plus one, choose two k. Now my cosine over cosine cancels, and now I have sine over cosine, which gives me tangent. So I have tangent evaluated at m pi over 2n plus 1, and that's all raised to the 2n minus 2k plus 1. And then that's all equal to 0. Great. Now I want to use a little bit of a trick. So I want to divide this whole thing by tangent to the m pi over 2n plus 1. And I want to do that because I've got this extra power of tangent that I don't really need. So I'll go ahead and divide that, but that's as easy as just um, erasing this plus 1. Now I want to do another thing that's a little bit of a trick, and that is I want to notice that this is equal to an even number in the exponent. So I can divide that by 2 and bring this in and have it be a tangent squared. 
So now if we read this, we have the sum k equals zero to n minus one to the n minus k, two n plus one choose two k, and now we have tangent squared of this all to the n minus k power. But what that tells us is that tangent squared of m pi over two n plus one is a root of a certain polynomial and that polynomial is given by exactly this object up here where I just have an x instead of the tangent squared. So this is the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 to the n minus k. 2n plus 1 choose 2k x to the n minus k. So it's a root of that polynomial. But notice by this second observation down here this tangent squared of m pi over 2n plus 1 all being distinct, that means these are all roots for m between 1 and n. In other words, we have every root of this polynomial, which that will allow us to factor this polynomial into linear factors. And that's what we'll do at the top of the next board. So on the last board, we just got finished arguing that tangent squared evaluated at m pi over 2n plus 1 was a root of this degree n polynomial, and that was true for m between 1 and n. So the important thing to latch on here is we have n distinct roots of this degree n polynomial. We know they're distinct by our earlier observation. So what that tells us is we know how to factor this degree n polynomial exactly into linear terms. So this factors as the product of x minus each of these roots. So here we have x minus tangent squared evaluated at pi over 2n plus 1. So that would be like the n equals 1 term times x minus tangent squared of 2 pi over 2n plus 1. That would be the next term. And then all the way up to the very last term, x minus tangent squared of n times pi over 2n plus 1. So now we just need to argue that we have the right leading coefficient. So on the right hand side, if we were to multiply that out, we would have x to the n with a coefficient of 1. But if we look at the coefficient in front of x to the n here, that's what we get from plugging in k equals 0. So notice plugging in k equals 0 gives us x to the n here, gives us 2n plus 1 choose 0, which is 1. And then it gives us minus 1 to the n here. So that means we need to multiply this right hand side by minus 1 to the n to make it match. So the next thing that we'll do is use the fact that this equation is true for all x which tells us the coefficient of every power of x on the left hand side has to be equal to the coefficient of every power of x on the right hand side. Now we will extract some choice coefficients from each side of the equation and that will build our goals over here. So the first thing I want to do is extract the constant terms from each side. Maybe we'll start with the right hand side. So notice the constant term on the right hand side we achieve by multiplying this entire thing out but never multiplying an x in. In other words, we multiply this tangent squared term by this tangent squared term by this tangent squared term and so on and so forth. But each of those is attached to a minus one but there are exactly n minus ones which will cancel with this minus one here. So in other words, from the right hand side we get the constant term is exactly equal to this product m equals 1 to n of tangent squared of m pi over 2n plus 1. So notice m equals 1 we'll get from that term right there, m equals 2 from the next term and so on and so forth. Okay now from the left hand side of the equation notice the constant term will be the x to the 0 power term. In other words the k equals n term but notice for the k equals n term, we'll have minus 1 to the n minus n, so that's just 1. Then we'll have 2n plus 1 choose 2n. So this is going to be 2n plus 1 choose 2n. But using kind of a symmetric equation for binomial coefficients, that's the same thing as 2n plus 1 choose 1 or 2n plus 1. 
So we've achieved our second goal here. The product of all of these tangent squareds is 2n plus 1. Now the next thing that I want to do is extract the x to the n minus 1 term. So I'll write this as the coefficient of x to the n minus 1. Okay, great. So let's see what we get over here on the right-hand side of the equation. So on the right-hand side of the equation, we achieve that by multiplying n minus 1 x's and then a single tangent squared. So good. So notice there's going to be a minus sign attached to that single tangent squared, which will combine with this minus sign in front to give us minus 1 to the n plus 1. And then we'll have this sum, m equals 1 to n, of tangent squared of m pi over 2n plus 1. So let's talk through the first one. So if we have m equals 1, that would be like multiplying this term with all the rest x's. The m equals 2 would be multiplying this term with all the rest x's, and then so on and so forth. But each of these is attached to a minus sign, but the whole picture is attached to a minus 1 to the n. So that gives us minus 1 to the n plus 1. Great. Now we're going to extract x to the n minus 1 term from the right-hand side, which means we need k to be equal to 1. So notice if k is equal to 1, we get minus 1 to the n minus 1 from this guy right here. And then we'll have 2n plus 1 choose 2. So 2n plus 1 choose 2. But notice that minus 1 to the n plus 1 and minus 1 to the n minus 1 are the same parity. So that means I can just get rid of those. And then we have a formula for our first goal. In, a, in other words, the sum of these tangent squared terms. But we can do a little bit more with this to make it maybe look a little more interesting. Let's recall that this is equal to 2n plus 1 times... 2n all over 2. Good. So we can cancel some 2s and write this as n times 2n plus 1. So that's maybe one interesting way to write this. Another interesting way to write this is we could just notice that this is exactly equal to the 2nth triangular number. So we've achieved our goal of finding closed forms for the sum and the product of these tangent squared type terms. And I think that's a good place to stop.